so you have also introduced uh, something called as innovation uh, education or innovation teaching methods so what is this all about and uh, does it uh, really have an impact on uh, students other than the conventional teaching what is uh, your innovative teaching all about <laughs> yeah like i have mentioned earlier you know the background of uh, mba mm. i have noticed that uh, when i was a professor for uh, management school mm. and this was uh, though, though it, i was as a resource person mm -hmm. and i used to take the special lectures for them mm. there i noticed that what they study mm. and uh, the correlation to what they study and practically what is put to use mm -hmm. was somewhere and there was a big bridge which needs to be covered Mm -hmm. and also i always used to wonder like taking my own case mm -hmm. if we if i remember what did i study when i was in my 10th grade mm -hmm. i'm sure i would have forgotten by the time i finished my exam and i'm out mm -hmm. right if i'm not using it yeah. it's over mm -hmm. so i thought education should be something which should be joyous like joyous machine this also comes in so i've seen children with you know with their heavy bags going to school looking so stressed moving from one from school to tuition to back home and eating in between in the car or you know in the rickshaw where they are traveling so this is not life this is not they what is so meant to be they are so stressed out exactly yeah. and they train and they're all examination oriented they exactly. have the fear of the examination and really they and can't the, do well and the best and part they, hmm. the parents are the ones who are putting the stress on the children Correct. And the school, on the other hand, is the pressing on the child. So Correct. for child, it's like total victim mode. Yes. They are always in that victim mode. Mm -hmm. So then I thought that education is something which should be joyous. Right. When I'm looking at health, mm -hmm. because education and health, mm -hmm. they are the two arms of any person. Yeah. You empower them, they mm -hmm. will be for life happy. Correct. Between two hands lies the heart. Mm. And if the heart is happy everything is okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, mm. uh, I started with this concept of experiential learning. Okay. And learning through games. Mhm. Mm so, when I was first I trained the teachers. Mm. So, it was it was good that I had 1500 schools been allotted to me mm -hmm. to start up with this program mm. and take experiential training as an important mode of education. Okay. So, these these schools colleges which were there under me We, I had a lot of workshops and training. It was all schools of Maharashtra of or Mumbai? Or? Only Mumbai. Only Mumbai. And then Bangalore also invited me. Correct. Then there were few in Delhi as well. Okay. Yes, but but when I started, fifteen hundred came in because of one particular training which I had done for them, mm -hmm. and they said this is something which we need. Correct. And this I'm talking about is two thousand and somewhere between two thousand ten and twelve or so. Right. And that was when I came to know that no, I have to work on it. Hmm. and experiential trainings may uh, training the teacher first i started with the principals mm -hmm. so i trained more than i think 1500 schools so more than 1500 principals <laughs> and teachers were in huge oh. numbers oh. and students again in huge numbers so i crossed more than 5 lakh i don't even know the numbers i've stopped counting now so okay. there were more than 5 lakh even only in the short span hmm. of 4 to 5 years okay. and that is where i found that you know children if they learn joyously they remember forever Okay. So as it is said, no, mm. you you tell a child to read, he will mm. remember only till he reproduces it. Mm. You tell a child to listen, probably he will remember a little more. But if you make a child do it, he will remember for life. Correct. And that is how I made the teachers create programs per games per topic. Like a geometry teacher, I told them if you are going to teach them what is the size of a room, have a classroom, empty the chairs. Make the children walk, count the steps, and then figure out the rule. Oh, <laughs> so these simple things every school yes. can do, right? Yes. I'm not telling them to. Uh, and invest. once they do that, they'll never forget. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And I told the teachers, "This yes. is how you're going to do it." Correct. And I was uh, fortunate enough that I had the support of mm. the yard, that is the government support as well, to do this. Mm. And same thing with water. Hmm. Take water in a bottle, and hmm. if you want to know how much you've had, you mark hmm. it hmm. and say, "I had this much ml of water." Hmm. So they could understand exactly these small, small concepts. Okay. Right? It, you don't need a lab. Hmm. You don't need a big infrastructure. Hmm. The same for business students. Mm -hmm. Now I'm coming to the university. There, I taught them about understanding how to address conflicts. Mm -hmm. Because you read everything in your uh, hmm. uh, books. right i have read philip kotler we read everything 
But when it comes to the boardroom, I'm not going to sit and remember Philip Kotler, right? Mm. I'm going to remember how I'm going to handle this. <laughs> Correct. Correct. That's the situation there. Uh-huh. So I started the experiential trainings for them. Okay. And then professionals and corporates, mm. experiential training. And for students, I did a lot of work with regards to MERT, mm. emotions. Mm. So anger management, mm. fatigue management. Okay. People have often not heard about fatigue management. Mm. Fatigue management. Then talked about a lot about body shaming. Talked about more and about you know interaction and communication, intrapersonal and interpersonal. All of these trainings were done. So I think it runs to the list is on and on and on with the trainings taken. Mm-hmm. But yes, experiential training mm. is the note. And now I would say it is so nice mm. that teachers are started putting it into mainstream. No. So all the hard work which was put in then, mm. showing some good results. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, and I think it has to be expanded uh, yes. nationwide. Exactly. Isn't it? Right. Yeah. And I guess all the B schools, mm. all the universities, the schools, principals, mm. teachers, students should have such trainings in their school. Yes, and a lot why, of uh, research is going on now. Uh, experiential exactly. uh, right. learning also. And include gamification in that. Yeah. Experiential comes one, gamification, mm. you Gamification. create something out of it. Correct. So the pyramid to go from basic knowledge to creativity. Correct. That is important. That's why, you know, as a resource person mm. on this platform, I would say anybody needs help. Mm. I would definitely mm. like to come in mm. and train your teachers, train your principals okay. and train your, the deans of university because I've done that as well. So anybody who needs such trainings can definitely connect to me because we cannot be everywhere, but we can be somewhere. Yeah, at least if you train the teachers, no? it will go to the children. It will go to the children. Yes. That is, right. <laughs> yeah. And also about uh, the, your recent book, Hanuman Wisdom. <laughs> That's a <laughs> wonderful book. And uh, why Hanuman is one question that really, I mean, uh, I'm very curious to know about it. And uh, also you have covered a lot of topics like uh, leadership training, then uh, entrepreneurial, being, being an entrepreneur, like what, what are the skills that you will have to, uh, you will have to gain. And uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, changing situations, how to adapt to the changing situations and uh, so many topics you have covered it's an amazing book I can say and uh, can you uh, elaborate on that book <laughs> this book is uh, I would say hmm. we needed an, a name on the book to showcase that it was written by somebody hmm. but it's all about Hanumanji okay right? <laughs> <laughs> why 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 <laughs> yeah so, this book uh, has a lot of topics like I would I have a copy here to show. Hmm. So Hanuman Wisdom is for corporate and entrepreneurial excellence. Hmm. And uh, coming from a background of having studied MBA, somewhere I was able to correlate it as a spiritual scientist as well. Okay. So this is the two aspects of me coming together in this book. Hmm. You and have integrated uh, spiritual sciences along with the MBA, yes, uh, the, the business, business administration. And the, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so this book yeah. was... Uh, uh, written basically because I found, like I said, there was a lot of you know, bridges to be covered hmm. for people to excel. Hmm. And most of the time people struggle to excel. Okay. If the right kind of knowledge is given to them in the simplest way, hmm. I guess the struggle period and the hmm. intensity can be reduced. Okay. So the con- whole concept was that. Hmm. And Hanuman, uh, I would say because I was always a Hanuman Bhakti. Okay. Right, he comes naturally to me because and I, was, I have heard uh, that Hanuman is a god who who communicated very well. Yes, he's a god of communication. Yes, that's yes. what I have heard. Yeah, you're very yeah. right. But apart from communicating, he had a lot of other uh, aspects. Hmm. Okay, which we need to understand, which I have put up in this book. So I'll go in a sequence to showcase. Hmm. He was a person who showcases devotion to purpose. Okay, so in a corporate. Hmm. His devotion to purpose, hmm. to Ramji, hmm. is known to us. Hmm. But that devotion can be applied to us hmm. in our corporate world. Yeah. In our regular the life devotion as well. to the vision of the company. Uh, company. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. The devotion should be. Not yes. a devotion to a chair. Yeah. It's devotion to the organization. Right? Yes. So, because uh, again, Lord Hanuman was all about his devotion to Ram, but leading to the final purpose. Hmm. Okay. Like to the final goals. So mm. it was always that. And how he enacted or thought about things in times of adversities. Different situations and how he could. How he found synergy. 
how he could adapt to the worst of the situations to the biggest of the situation hmm. how he took his decisions hmm. Hmm. and how he communicated very wisely hmm. simple example when masita asked him hmm. that how is lord ram he said he is on the way hmm. right he did not tell him that he is stressed yeah because he already know that ma sita is already in distress yeah he didn't want to add he didn't to want to <laughs> he, didn't he did want not to want to yeah. add stress add to this stress to it right <laughs> because it would go exponential then yeah and again when lord ram asked that how is ma sita hmm. he told that she is waiting for you okay. so that becomes a motivating factor for him hmm. to go because she is waiting hmm. so these small things how a person can communicate yes. and this is the truth as it is Correct. But only put in a form which is creating only positive effects, because ripples are very important. Right. Uh, still, water if throw a stone in the wrong place, it's going mm. to backfire. If mm-hmm. you put it in the right place, it will create the rippling effect. Ripples. Mm-hmm. That rippling effect is going to show you mm-hmm. what exactly is happening. So that is how this vibrate. It's all about again vibrations because I'm a person of vibrations. So yeah. this book was. Uh, And you carry those vibes. <laughs> I've never seen you. I mean, sullen or sad or uh, never, never. <laughs> Because I've been seeing you for so many yeah, years. It's been years. Uh, been yeah. <laughs> Jai Hind Manji ki again. <laughs> yeah. And this book is, like I said, hmm. it needed a name of an author. Okay. So this is an author surrogate book. Hmm. Uh, when I was meditating in the Himalayas at the Neem Karoli Baba Ashram, hmm. it was a sense. Oh, 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 I don't know when I was meditating. That it was as if he sat there and told me, "This is what you need to be writing," mm. and the whole guidance and channeling happened there. So this book yeah. was written in a very short time mm-hmm. and published. So it was not much time where I could also promote it and create a hype to tell people that the book is coming. It it's just come up. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing is Hanuman Bajrang Ban, Hanuman Ashtar, and Hanuman Chalisa. Okay. The essence of all three has come together because it's come from the source himself. So I would say, करता हुआ नाम अपना होता वाली बात है ये तो. So this is how the book came, and it is. It's mm. really nice to see that people have accepted this book well. Okay. And uh, also, people are looking forward to seeing their excellence in mm. business mm. and as entrepreneurs and also as corporate leaders. Okay. So this, I, this for me is a boon. <laughs> <laughs> to be in that zone, to have been able to write and to be chosen one mm. to pen down that words of wisdom of Lord Hanuman. Okay, that's fantastic. Like how uh, uh, Valmiki wrote uh, Ramayana, <laughs> and uh, Vedavyas wrote Mahabharata. Oh, really? <laughs> It's something like Hanuman has come in your uh, yeah. and told to write uh, such a book. I can say. Yeah. Uh, so with uh, uh, like uh, your expertise in NLP. like how do you bring in the full potential uh, into individuals through your nlp coaching ah yeah nlp <laughs> was another topic like one of my doctorates was in nlp out of the five yeah. so uh, nlp basically what i majorly work on as we all know it's all about belief systems yeah. right it's again about uh, emotional intelligence yes, i can yeah, say yeah. Th- that is yeah, how they're all connected. interconnected Interlink, all yes. your uh, i mean different therapies in different fields you are working they're all uh, linked together yes, yeah yes, very <laughs> yes. much like in nlp i do lot of signature analysis hmm. i do lot of graphological analysis okay right i also look at the persona of a person okay so nlp is not something which i would take only as mindset right it's a study about how what i perceive about the person hmm. as a neutral person hmm. and what is it that is you know we need to just bridge the gap correct nobody likes to see that you are doing something wrong okay because if then if it was wrong that person wouldn't have done it right sun belief in them is making them do because they think it is right okay so uh, my work majorly as a life coach business coach you know and using nlp there basically i just tell people first you accept what you are okay and when you accept what you are you will know that what is working for me and what is not working for me and what is not working for me i take professional help or i try to figure out and then if it is something which i need to change i change right so three a's are very important one is awareness mm, okay. be aware where we are mm. going wrong mm. like mm. if i'm if i'm feeling thirsty mm. Mm. i should know that i'm thirsty mm. and what is the remedy drink water drink water it's simple mm. as that mm. but if i don't want to admit that i'm thirsty mm. 
then the then you are not on the, yeah. on the right path you are right on the right. <laughs> and if i don't have water <laughs> and i don't see water anywhere around me hmm. i can then ask somebody hmm. to give me water that is a that professor is the has yielded it oh, that's right. the help that you are doing. yeah so nlp is all about understanding hmm. what is within us hmm. and what is it which is lacking hmm. and how what are the actions we can take hmm. to bring it to a completion okay so closing the loop you keeping open ended things one is yeah. awareness you said what are, what are the other two e action action oh first is awareness be okay. aware hmm. then accept hmm. okay. accept it you accept it a person who is very angry hmm. okay He's and then take aware. action on it exactly awareness acceptance and then action, action. Yes. so these three is are very beautifully explained in the book reclaim your riches right how to do it okay because only then your vibrations will be higher okay. and only then you will manifest the wealth you want in your life So if you love money I guess you people have to read Reclaim Your Riches. <laughs> And I would say I okay, love money. Okay, let me read that and uh, <laughs> I want to become wealthy. Yeah. Because if you have wealth you hmm. can contribute to the world. Hmm. Right? Wealth of knowledge, hmm. wealth of good health, hmm. wealth of money, hmm. and then you can help. Uh Dr. Sujata, how do you integrate your Vedic knowledge? with your coaching and teaching and uh, what uh, benefits have you absorbed observed from your yeah uh, uh, basically uh, i have people who come for the life coaching sessions because either they are having some somewhere some gap which they want to be covered and also it could be because they want to move ahead in life okay right so when it comes to that what would be better than the vedic systems frankly speaking because it is time tested we have had it for centuries okay. it's helped people across various professions mm -hmm. those times also mm -hmm. so when it could work then mm -hmm. why wouldn't it work now correct okay. it's just that we have not understood the science behind it okay and that is why often because i'm a speaker for the uh spreading the vedic knowledge across the world and as a bharat vishwa guru aspect also as, as i speak on them vedic knowledge is something which creates those vibrations in the human body and mind that we can handle even the most adverse situations okay and that brings in complete emotional balance now because i was so closely connected to understanding our culture right from the beginning so we have our various systems like you do the puja you do the mantras you do the havan you do all of these things but it has a lot of significance and working as a spiritual scientist i dig out the science from them okay. and present it to the world which showcases that india is not a land of snake charmers mm -hmm. and superstitions mm -hmm. but it is a land of spiritual scientists okay. who did not work in labs but they worked in the inner lab called as consciousness and the mind Oh, and they are the ones mm. who have given the knowledge the wisdom mm. and also the ability to use that wisdom in the right way oh. today the world understands today mm. they look up to india and they say mm. that your country is a rich culturally rich country mm. india is a land of spiritual scientists mm. all our sages we talk about the saptarishis mm. each one of them actually holds those aspects of energies mm. which we need to balance our life okay the whole of the brahmand which we talk mm -hmm. is the constellation that is the energies okay if we understand now people often say indians you believe in astrology mm. now the whole world believes mm. in it mm. of course but the initially i would say in times when we were still under slaves we were subjugated only for the reason taking us to be farmers who are not educated mm. but our dna holds the wisdom of the vedic times right that which has been lost so so like uh, if you have to recite some vedic mantras which really uh, i mean uh, i mean brings those uh, energies uh, into human beings so what are those uh, mantras in fact each mantra mm -hmm. which is there in our vedic text mm -hmm. is having an energy specific to it okay if you want education you'll have one mantra mm -hmm. if you want good health you will have a mantra okay now what has been lost is mm. how to recite the mantra okay that we need to be activated because when put in a musical form those vibrations are created and those vibrations is something which reverberates into the body okay. and that reverberation helps activation of the chakra oh so the chakra which is dormant mm. which is in regression or which is not vibrating in that frequency gets activated 
Okay. So there are various mantras like that. And that is why if you would have noticed the Gayatri mantra is one which is initiated into the child as soon as possible. Because it creates the vibration of focus. Okay. It creates the vibration of learning. Mm -hmm. It creates the vibration of being, you know, in a zone wherein they can dig deeper into things. And Rather absorb than, knowledge. Exactly. Yeah. When you dig deeper, you know, basically absorb, then you go deeper into it. Yeah. So that is how it is. Because the whole world is nothing but a shiny object syndrome, full okay. of distractions, mm -hmm. Maya. Mm -hmm. But we need to actually understand one thing, go deep into it and reach our goals in life, purpose in life. Okay. So all our mantras are basically to focus towards a goal. And that is how mantras form an integral part of the Vedic system. And this is what I do in my ret in retreats across the world. Mm. We, I have like many people coming from various countries. Mm. And in those retreats, I speak about the spiritual sciences. Okay. And it's really nice to see that those people are now coming towards, you know, now my next retreat is in Rishikesh mm. in October. Mm. They look forward to coming mm. for the reason is because they want to know about how we are so spiritually evolved. Right, one dip in the Ganges, they said something changed in me. Right, simple as that. What changed, they wouldn't know, but they say something, I feel light. Example, yeah. that lightness is because whatever negative was there within them, somewhere feels being washed out okay. because of the composition of in the water of the Ganges. Okay. So it is a science. So my work is to look into that aspect, mm. give a logical reasoning mm. and showcase that Vedic systems are something which is time tested, mm. scientifically proven, Hmm. and very practical oh that's wonderful wonderful <laughs> so you talk about all the vedas is it rugeja sama and atharva yes depending hmm. on what is needed at that point of time yeah sama veda majorly music wagera majorly hai. music only yes yeah sama veda se hmm. more of it but definitely yes i use all the knowledge but again i would say i have not studied the vedas per se as such hmm. but i meditate on them Okay. So somewhere I feel my, uh, right now I'm in a situation where what needs to come to me comes to me. And that is what I get. So what is uh, what is needed comes to me, I would say. So okay. even in an audience where I have 3,000 people also at times, hmm. what they need, they receive. Okay. So it is, I wouldn't say that I have to be a pundit to know that. Right. If I know the science of that, hmm. if I do it in the right way, hmm. definitely the person is going to get the results. So when we talk about mantras, it's a combination of various vibrations. And these vibrations, when they come together in the right sequence, in the right form of reverberating into the body, that is where the magic begins. So like, for example, if I have to just share a short mantra right now, it would be that first we bring our hands together. We unfold our legs, right? That is because we want to bring the left and the right hemisphere into unison. Okay. And that is where the magical or the miracle mind starts working. That's where the self-healing mechanism also starts getting activated. Okay, so, so when you bring your hands together, you are bringing the right and the left brain together. <laughs> yes. Am I right? Yes, exactly. Yes. <laughs> and it is at the heart center. Okay. It's at the heart center. That okay. means you are allowing your mental and your emotional body mm. to come in unison. Okay. And that's where the magic begins. Okay. So if I have to chant a mantra, for example, I'll just chant one small mantra. Mm. So we get an understanding about how it works, right? So first being grounded is very important that your feet are there or your cross legged, mm. however comfortable. Right? Mm. Take a deep breath in and then chant the mantra and see that you take the least breaks of breaths. That is another aspect to it. Om Satchitananda Parabrahma Purushottama Parematama Shri Bhagavati Samida Shri Bhagavati Nama Hari Om Tat Sat Hari Om Tat Sat Hari Om Tat Sat Hari Om Tat Sat Okay. <laughs> so when we chant the mantras, it is not about how beautifully you are chanting. Hmm. It's about how united you are with that vibration. Okay. Right? So now it could be that a person would not do a high pitch or may not do a low pitch, but how concentrated you are to that mantra and at that point of time, what is your state? And that state creates a higher state of consciousness. Okay. And at that point of time, you're able to be in that zone where your self-healing mechanism activates. 
Okay. That's the reason Indians chant mantras. Right. And now we see the whole world telling Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, all the different parts, but they need to be taught the sanctity of the mantra. Okay. How we need to be doing it. And that's exactly what I spread to the world. The that's Vedic right. wisdom in the right way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So every drop creates a ripple. Hmm. And this ripple, every Indian can do it. Okay. So let each one of us, hmm. with whatever knowledge we have, hmm. spread this peace to the world. Because hmm. it's in our DNA. Okay. We don't have to go anywhere else. So my message to all our viewers would be, hmm. let's make India proud hmm. by reviving Bharat. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Sujata. Thank you, you have so given much. so much of insights and a lot of knowledge and the way you uh, carry yourself and your cheerful face and the vibes that you carry uh, will be, I mean, I can say it spreads everywhere. And uh, you have worn uh, many hats effortlessly, I can say. You are into so many things. You have touched upon education. Somewhere you are talking about uh, spiritual sciences for sound therapy. You even have trained uh, principals, teachers and MBA graduates again you have to, uh, spoken to scientists and, <laughs> and this wide range of uh, your uh, role I appreciate it greatly and thank you so much for thank being with so us much. thank you it was my pleasure <laughs> yeah <laughs>